Did you miss me? Number one. Find the ratio of the speeds of an electron and a negative hydrogen ion, having one extra electron that is accelerated through the same voltage, assuming non-relativistic final speeds. Take the mass of the hydrogen ion to be 1.67 times 10 to the minus 7, 27, excuse me, kilojoules. Eh, what a way to be back. Can't even read the problem. Anyway, so uh, what we realize here is that we're going to have an electron. So we'll label that just E minus. And then we're going to have a hydrogen ion. Right, hydrogen has one proton in the middle. And it's going to have basically two electrons now on the outside. And since it has one proton and two electrons, the net charge of this thing is going to be a negative one. Similarly, same thing for the electron. It's just an electron, negative one charge, so the charge of the electron is also negative one. Now notice that they're both going to have the same charge, okay? The only difference is going to be in terms of the mass. Now we should note that the mass of a proton is actually basically 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And why then does this thing weigh 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms overall if it also has two extra electrons? Well, that's because the electrons themselves have a mass of about 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So they're basically like, you know, about a thousand times smaller than that of a proton. So they're basically negligible. Anyway, just in case you were curious. So... What I now need to do is I now need to uh, try to find the ratio of the speeds of the two. So let's take a look at our first equation over at the top. We have then change in the voltage, right? Or the change of potential, electric potential, whatever the heck you want to call it, is basically going to be equal to the change in the object's potential energy, then divided by the charge of the uh, particle. So what I realize here is that the charges of both of these, so we can basically set up two equations, right? I can call this, uh, I can, you know, use subscripts here and basically say the, the change of potential for the electron is going to be equal to the change of the potential energy of the electron divided by the charge of the electron. For then the hydrogen ion, I can say the potential difference is basically going to, of the hydrogen ion is basically going to be equal to the change of the potential energy of the hydrogen ion, then all divided by the charge of the hydrogen ion. So now remember, these parts are equivalent right? The potential they said is going to be the same potential difference, okay? Because it said same voltage. Voltage is potential. I know it's confusing. Also, they have the same charge, as I just mentioned before. The electron's minus one, and so is the hydrogen ion here, because it has an extra... I mean, there's two hydrogen ions, but this is basically the hydride ion for all you chemistry people out there. So what I realize now is that basically, if these two are the same for each equation, then what can I also say about the potential energy? Well, they're going to be the same too, right? So why don't I start there? Why don't I start by saying then that the change in potential energy of the electron will be equal to the change in the potential energy of the hydrogen ion there. Now, if, you know, in terms of potential energy, there's really only two types. If, if these electron and this, if the electron and the hydrogen ion are going to be accelerating, let's say through some type of uh, electric field of sorts or some through, or, or some uh, potential difference, we notice, we note that then the change in potential energy, if they're equal, well, that would also mean that the kinetic energy changes are also equal, right? Because if potential energy is changing, well, what's happening if, if we're talking about a motion, right? if we're talking about motion, that means the kinetic energy is also changing. So basically what I can say is that the kinetic energy of the electron then, I'm not going to go through the difference and whatnot, it's just equal, okay? Kinetic energy of the electron will be equal to then the kinetic energy of that hydrogen ion. So this is then where we now start to get ourselves into velocity, right? That's how we can, because again, they're asking for ratio speeds. So now what I realize is that basically now I can form a simple um, ratio. I don't necessarily need this equation. Actually, no, I kind of do because it's the ratio of the speeds, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do here, let's just move this all to the side for the time being. Hold on. All right. Hope you guys are having a great semester. All right, <clears throat> it's probably, might be the start of it. And uh, yeah, so kinetic energy, one half times mass uh, times the velocity squared is going to be equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. So, right, so notice, remember, the only difference here is that the one side is talking about, whoa. Um, that was thunder, in case you're... I'm uh, wondering. So, um, can't wait for the F5 tornado to be outside my window. So here we have um, the electrons 
information on the left, and we're going to have the hydrogen ion information on the right. And there goes the dog. So the one half would cancel, right? The mass of then the electron I mentioned before, that's going to be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Multiplied then by the um, <coughs> velocity of the electron squared. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the hydrogen ion here, which is 1.67, as they mentioned, times 10 to the minus 27th. That's going to be multiplied then by the velocity of the hydrogen ion squared. Now, they don't really tell me how they want this uh, ratio, okay? So, I don't know. I guess what I'll do is I'll make it, uh, you know, a, a value greater than 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to then find the velocity of the electron relative to that of the hydrogen ion, okay? So basically just do some cross multiplication here. I'm going to divide this side by the velocity of the hydrogen ion. Squared, that is, right? I got to bring the square with me. And then I'm going to divide uh, the 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 on over to the right hand side. And if all the scribble scrabble on the page isn't confusing you, um, then you're definitely better than me because I, I can't even understand what I wrote. So here we go. So this is about 1.67. <clears throat> so actually, you know what? Why don't we actually find the number? Let's just throw this thing into the calculator, okay? So we got 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 divided by then 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And get a value here of about 1,833, okay? Now, take the square root of both sides because we got to find the ratio of the speeds, not the ratio of the squared speeds. And this tells us that the velocity of the electron to that of the hydrogen ion will be equal to the square root of that value, which is, well, to the square root of a negative number, so that doesn't quite work, right? And we get about 42.8. So 42.8, okay? That's meaning the velocity of that electron will be about 42.8 times larger than that of the hydrogen ion. Um, if you solved it the other way, then it would have been 1 over... 42.8, and your answer should have been then about 0 0.023356, blah, 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 blah. And that would have been then the ratio of the hydrogen ion to that of the electron. Anyway, guys, hope this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. All right, it's great to be back, and I'll talk to you soon. Well, just one-way communication, because you're just listening to me lecture. Be well.